Welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat, in which we would look at investment companies and net asset value or NAV. This topic is covered in an essentials or principles of investment course, whether graduate or undergraduate. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement your accounting as well as your finance courses, CPA, CFA, or CMA exam. So let's talk about investment companies. What are investment companies? Investment companies are intermediaries, financial intermediaries that collect funds. So somebody need to give them funds. So investors will need to give them money and invest those funds in potentially a wide range of securities. So you give them the money. This is the investment companies. And usually it's a mutual fund because most investment companies take the form of a mutual fund. And what you do is they go out there, they pull this money together. The key is pooling of assets behind investment companies and they can buy a lot of different stocks because an individual they cannot buy shares in all these stocks through an investment companies they can do so and each individual each investor has a claim to the portfolio established by the investment companies in proportion of the amount invested and that's going to be measured through something called NAV net asset value will compute that shortly these companies provide a mechanism for small investors even one in the one individuals to all team up together to obtain the benefit of a large-scale investing and this is the purpose of investing company so you give them your money and they don't buy property plant and equipment and they start the business they take your money and they invest your money in other securities and other companies and other assets in this way that's how the financial assets and this is how they generate money for you so they do provide you other other uh, other important functions uh, first, they play at the record keeping and administration. That's very important. Basically, investment companies, they issue you periodic status report, what's going on with the, with your, with the investments. Keep track of your capital gains and distribution, especially for tax purposes, your dividend, your investments, your redemption. Every time they buy, they sell, they have to let you know about this. And they may reinvest any dividend or in interest income for the shareholders on your behalf. They also provide you with diversification and divisibility because by pulling all this money together they enable investors to hold fractional of a share of many different securities so by by giving your money for example if you give them a hundred dollar that hundred dollar is in theory invested in so many different companies if you have the hundred dollars yourself you cannot buy 10 different companies but through the investment companies you are invested in all these companies so they act as a large investor even though individual investors cannot also because of the large scale because a lot of money are pulled together you could have professional management so they can support full-time staff and security analysts such as cfas portfolio managers who attempt to achieve superior investment compared to other investors or the market also as a result of the pooling you have a lower transaction cost because they trade in large blocks of securities they could achieve substantial savings on brokerage and commission fees so because all this money is pulled together, you also need to find a way to divide the claim to those assets among investors. How do you do so? Because investors buy shares in investment companies and that ownership is proportional to the number of shares you purchase. So depending on how many shares you purchase, if you, if you purchase 100 out of 1,000, you own 10%. So the value of each share, just kind of know how to value the each share, it's called NAV or net asset value. So how do we compute net, net asset value? Every time you hear the word net, it means something is subtracted from the asset in this situation, net asset. Basically, taking assets minus liabilities, subtracting liabilities, expressed on a per share basis. So something, the formula would look something like this. The market value of the assets minus the liabilities for the investment companies divided by the shares outstanding. The best way to illustrate this is to work an example. Suppose a mutual fund that manages a portfolio of securities worth 120 million, that's the value of the securities, Suppose the fund owes four million uh, to its investment advisors and owes a million for rent, wages, due, and miscellaneous expenses. So they have expenses, they and they um, 
they have to pay those expenses out of the fund. And the fund has 5 million shares. Well, let's plug in the formula. We have 120 million of assets minus the liabilities, which will give us 115 million divided by 5 million shares. The net asset value is $23. Now, obviously, if the asset value goes up, if those investments goes up in value the net asset value for each individual will go up as well obviously if the liabilities go up it will go down if the number of shares goes down this will go up this will go up so let's take a look at another example consider these data from from the 2020 year-end annual report of fidelity assume all values are in millions what was the net asset value of the portfolio so again we have to look up its net assets divided by the number of shares what is assets net assets is assets minus liabilities so we're going to take the assets subtract the liabilities to come up with net asset and we're going to divide this by 65.45 million and that's going to give us 100 two dollars and 99 cents almost 103 dollars so that's the net asset value of this of this mutual fund in the next session we would look at the different types of investment companies because we have different types of them again the mutual fund is the largest but we have to take a look at them and we'd look at mutual funds separately but we have to take a look at the different type of investment companies as always i'm gonna remind you to like this recording share it Visit my website for additional resources if you're trying to supplement or complement your finance or accounting education. Good luck and study hard.